healthy cooking program. I'm really excited to be here with Dr. Maribel Hernandez. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm Iron Chef Jose Garces. You're here at Shikutsu. This is my uh, private personal cook studio. Thanks for joining me for a, uh, you know, what's going to be hopefully uh, an educational but also delicious program. We want to thank our sponsors, the American Heart Association and Giant Food, Giant Foods for their delicious ingredients. And if you're watching and you feel like getting on your social media, please don't forget to, we encourage you to post and hashtag, hashtag Aldea Live and hashtag Heart Month. So thanks, thanks for coming out. Doctor, how are you feeling today? Oh, I feel great and it's such an honor to be here with you and I'm looking forward to this event. It's gonna be fun and I'm very tasty, no, no doubt, yeah. Fantastic, and you know, I think uh, it's great to be standing with you, you know, as a chef, it's always, you know, it's my job to uh, try to cook delicious food for our guests, our families, and I think really looking at it from a heart healthy approach, which is really, you know, important nowadays. Um, I'm excited to hear what you have to say about the recipes I'm going to cook, and yeah, and uh, obviously, I'm ready. I'm ready to let you jump in too. You ready? To get it? You ready? <laughs> well, so in all of my my cooking, I always like to start with a cocktail. I like, Great. you know, and so one of my favorite um, recipes is sangria. So I and do, I love sangria. Perfect, perfect. Yes. And yeah. I do a fantastic spice sangria. I, I serve it at my restaurant in Philadelphia, Amada. And um, yeah, can't wait to share this recipe with you. And one of the things that uh, we start with in, in cooking in general, it's really about flavor. How do we get great flavor into whatever recipe that we're cooking. And, and in this case, we're really gonna look at it from a heart healthy approach. So for, for my sangria, uh, typically we make a simple syrup and that simple syrup uses um, sugar. And so we're not gonna use sugar, we're gonna use agave nectar, which I have right here. So for this, call it uh, syrup infusion, I have some agave nectar right here. I'm gonna put that right into a pot. I have some canela or cinnamon, black pepper, corns as well. And then these are just apple peels from the apples that we're gonna use for our sangria. Mm -hmm. So the apple peels are right in there as well. And a little bit of lemon juice. So I'm gonna let that come up to a simmer. And sorry, we'll let that let that kind of come up to a simmer. I have, and this would usually take, this would usually be about, about 10 or 15 minutes on the stove. Let the, the cinnamon and the black peppercorns and that apple peels kind of infuse into it so that we, we end up with this um, kind of clear, not clear, but like uh, spiced agave mm -hmm. syrup, right? And so for our sangria here, we're gonna, Come bring this over and we have some fresh fruit. So we have oranges that we're gonna put right in here. Oranges, a little bit of, these are just cut apples. Some pears as well. And, and then I'm gonna infuse this syrup into it, right? So a little of that syrup. And then I have a few different um, call it, you know, the, the stuff that makes it go. We have some um, Cointreau, this is an orange liqueur. Um, and then I have a little bit of Applejack brandy, so a brandy as well. And then some red wine, right? And this is a Spanish wine, Marquez de Vizcal. Um, so I'm gonna add my liqueurs in here, my brandy, my orange liqueur, and a little more lemon juice in here. And so this fruit, typically, I'll let that, this can macerate overnight or even like, you know, 30 minutes or so. But I'm gonna let that kind of just come together. The, I mean, the more it macerates, the more flavor you're gonna get on it. Uh, and then I'm just gonna pour this, some of my fruit and this kind of spirit mixture right into the pot, right in here. And this, we'll get all the spirits in there. Pop that out. I'm gonna pour my red wine in here. 
And doctor, are you ready? You ready for your first task here? Yeah. Simple one, should be pretty simple easy. Simple one, okay. Yeah. Just gonna ask you to stir this up, give it a good stir, okay. and then pour us a glass in this, uh, in our iced pitcher. So here you go, boom. Okay. Yeah. Let's wipe this down here. It even smells great. Yeah. yeah the smell, yeah, with the fruit and the wine and the cointre, it smells great. Perfect, okay. yeah. So just, yeah, go ahead and uh, put a little bit of ice in here. Yeah, and you could just pour that in. We'll scoop some of the you fruit out and pour it. Yeah, as okay. much as, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, you know, my understanding, again, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but red wine is good for, good for, good for your heart. How, how, how often do you recommend... Uh, we drink red wine. I mean, I mean that, that's. I mean, I want to bust that myth a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah. We, should we be drinking it or no? <laughs> well, um, the the basic idea is that um, in general uh, we don't want people to drink wine uh, in excess. Okay. Uh, we recommend um, an American Heart Association to drink uh, no more than one glass of wine a day. Okay. But if you're not, if you don't drink wine or you don't drink alcohol, don't start. But if you do, it's good to limit, limit uh, the alcohol. So, um, and um, you know, one of the uh, uh, one of the things I like about this recipe is that it's an example of how you can use a more natural sugar and give it and add flavor with fruits and and other ingredients, so that even though um, you don't have in that, that real sugary taste, but you still a lot of flavor. That's right. And it's very healthy because we know that what happens with sugars, sugar is a carbohydrate, becomes fat, and not only you gain weight, but it can, the fat can cause a blockages in the arteries, goes into cholesterol. So we're eating a very healthy uh, drink and with some alcohol, a small amount, but one glass a day is fine, but with some other healthy uh, elements here. Okay, yeah. so we are in the clear to have this yes. one glass. So we're, one we're good. Glass, no this, is, more. this has some <laughs> some approval. Salud. Salud. Cheers. Mm. Oh. Mm. Fantastic. It's, Not bad. It is. It's refreshing. Re yes. Refreshing. Delicious. Yeah, and you get. Some of the spice from uh, from the canela or cinnamon kind of sticks out to me. A little of the black pepper, and yeah, just a great way to. Hey, you know, cooking is. Um, I find that you know, cooking is my time to kind of, you know, spend spend time with my partner, meditate a little, you know, focus on what I'm doing. It's it should really be an enjoyable activity at home, not not a chore. So. Yeah. It should be, you know, one of the benefits, which is good for the heart, by mm -hmm. the way, is uh, that time to be more relaxed, more, have more connection with your family and friends, and that's also heart healthy. Heart healthy, yeah, yeah yes. there we go. Okay. Yeah. So, we have our sangria that we can get to at any point. <laughs> so, in cooking, usually I start with the, the uh, what I call is elements. So, all of my dishes really revolve around putting different elements together, whether it's, you know, your protein, your vegetable, your starch, your grain. So our first element, and we usually, when I, and in thinking about it, I, I do the things that take long, a long time. We call long lead items. So for this dish, we're making, uh, we're making chicken and adobo with uh, quinoa, black beans, a little bit of avocado, and a cabbage slaw. So very, you know, I think really focusing on in incorporating a lot of flavor. So we're going to start by cooking our chicken. And uh, we have all of the things right here. So I can start doing a little bit of like, call it like product identification okay. and what this looks like. And um, so typically when I cook uh, some animal protein, I like to impart some flavor, whether it's a marinade, a rub, a dry spice. I do have, um, and that's that's a good way to impart a lot of flavor. 
And in my, uh, you know, in my opinion, a rub or a dry spice is one of the best ways to get a lot of flavor okay. onto your protein. So I have here some spices. And I think a lot of people are usually intimidated by cooking with spices or they don't know about them. And I think I would really encourage people to, to learn how to cook with spices. So I'm just gonna give you a few tips here. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna make what I call is a rub. And this rub cook works well with pork, with beef, with chicken, with fish. It really is a very like, um, user-friendly rub. So I have a few few different spices. So I have a little bit of garlic powder here, uh, some onion powder, a little bit of paprika, some ch uh, chipotle powder. This is uh, black pepper. This is a little bit of brown sugar. Kind of helps caramelize uh, our, our protein. This is a dried oregano, a little bit of cumin, and you know, this is again, this is a little bit of salt. We can leave the salt out. If we want, mm -hmm. we, could, we could put just a little, it's up to you. If you're really being heart healthy, maybe we'll, maybe we'll, yeah, maybe we'll omit we'll the salt, omit right? The salt. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna just gonna take this and I'm gonna kind of mix it up a little bit. And just take, I'm actually, doctor, I'm gonna have you mix this up. You ready? Just give it a nice little, okay. oh yeah, you got it. Just boom, boom, boom. <laughs> give it a nice little mix while you're mixing that. I'm going to put some rubber gloves on and work our, our chicken. I have some, some lean chicken breast meat right here that's very, uh, um, you know, I think from, from a protein standpoint, it's one of the, the most lean proteins you can, you can use when you're cooking. I am going to rub just a little bit of vegetable oil on it. I, I preferred olive oil when I'm cooking. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, uh, one of the healthiest oils or fats you can use. So I just... Just put a little bit of oil on there, and that's just to, to coat, coat the rub, coat the, coat the dry spice on the, on the actual chicken. And that, that, that oil is going to help. Oh, perfect. See, look at that. Is that Come a on. Yeah, <laughs> well, you got it. Yeah, you got, got it. it. Yeah. So now we'll take this. We'll kind of do a nice application. There's no, no calories, not a lot of fat in this, in this dry rub, almost, I mean, none. And so this is really just getting a ton of flavor going on these breasts. Mm -hmm. And again, this, this works well for fish, for any, pretty much any, any protein. This, this rub, I use it in soups, sauces. It really just kind of gives it, lends a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. So I'm coating it. You see, I'm, I'm adding like mm -hmm. a really nice liberal amount. And then you can, um, you can cook these in a pan. I happen to have what we call here is a plancha or griddle in, the, in my studio. So I'm going to take a little bit of, I do need to take a little bit of oil just to get, just so the protein doesn't stick. And I'm going to put this right on there. I just want to make a comment that when looking at the ingredients uh, in terms of heart healthy cooking, uh, number one, they're fresh ingredients. Uh, we, don't, we don't recommend processed food. Uh, ultra, uh, uh, their processed food in general is not healthy for the heart. And um, the meats, uh, this is a lean meat, white meat. Uh, if you're gonna eat meat, uh, it's, it's very important to, you, to uh, cook with lean meat uh, to avoid uh, getting meat with a lot of saturated fats, which are the fats, uh, there are a lot of good fats, but the saturated fats in some of the meats is what is uh, not, uh, harmful to the heart because you, again, have high cholesterol, which can cause blockages in the arteries. So these are all fresh ingredients and heart healthy ingredients. And avoiding, again, what we did, we limited the salt, but it's gonna have a lot of flavor uh, you're modifying it to have much, you can have great flavor without adding more salt. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the idea. And, you know, spices are really a key step in, a key ingredient in eliminating salt. Because that, you know, you're going to get a lot of, like, that punch of, like, the cumin. Cumin is such a great spice in, 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 my, in my world. It really adds a lot of depth. It's very traditional in our Latin cooking to cook with, with cumin, and it just adds so much flavor. So... We have, our, we have our chicken going. That's going to take, you know, a, a solid, like, 10 to 12 minutes, okay. right? 
Uh, and we're, while that's going, we're gonna cook a few other uh, staples for this dish. So, I have here a little bit of quinoa. So quinoa is known as, it's a, it's a Peruvian uh, grain, uh, usually cooked in, in Peruvian fare, but it's, as opposed to white rice or maybe potato, it's a little more uh, lean and it has a ton of like antioxidants and really, really healthy for you. Yeah, uh, quinoa has a very high content of protein. So it's um, one of the reasons it's very healthy and also has fiber and it can lower the cholesterol. So it's not just protein, it uh, can lower the cholesterol. And for people who have diabetes or prediabetes, actually can stabilize your sugar levels and has other benefits like magnesium, vitamin B1. So it's a really healthy um, uh, seed. And actually the Incas call it the mother of the grains. This was a sacred uh, grain for the Incas. Mm, fantastic, yes. yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm Ecuadorian, so I, I've, I had it growing up as well. We usually, we like to make uh, locros or chowders out of it as well. And so for this recipe, it's really about the ratio of liquid to quinoa to make it very simple. It's about two to one There we will provide the exact measurements. But what okay. I did was I used um, vegetable stock, which I have here. And I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'll bring the vegetable stock up to like a, a small simmer. I'll add the quinoa into that. And again, in any like rice or grain cookery, it is about, it's a, it's a ratio game. So making sure you have the right amount of liquid to the grain helps ensure that you have the perfect product. So I'm just gonna, I had again, some veggie stock. You can use chicken broth if you'd like. Um, I like to cook this with, um, yeah, usually vegetable stock. And I'm just really, I have it at like a medium heat. Once it starts simmering, I'll lower the heat and just kind of okay. let it steam. What's gonna happen is that quinoa is gonna absorb the liquid and it's gonna puff out, okay. and that's really the, the cooking process there. Very simple. Um, next, I'm going to, I have here, okay. I'm gonna put this in the back burner. We're gonna make some black beans, and these are very, very simple black beans. These are, these are actually just canned black beans I, I took them out, I strained them. I have a little bit of water right here. I have some aromatics, some onions and garlic. This is um, sofrito. So again, if you're in a pinch, you're at home and you wanna um, cook things pretty quickly, I don't, I don't mind buying sofrito. Mm -hmm. You can also make sofrito from uh, onions, peppers, garlic, and just let that kind of stew out all together. I have a little bit again of olive oil here. I'm gonna put in my pot. I'm gonna start by sweating out our onions and our garlic. And let those kind of cook a little bit. We're gonna give our, give our chicken a turn here in a minute. So you could see the, the, um, the spices kind of caramelized already we had a little bit of brown sugar and so that brown sugar helps to caramelize the right on top of there and these are looking pretty good you don't want to you know this is you don't want them to go kind of any further than that you start to take away some of the flavor so i like to like i think that's like a, a nice color for me um i have my aromatics here my black beans i'll add my sofrito in here well, I'm from Puerto Rico, and I grew up in Puerto Rico, and we use sofrito for a lot of our dishes almost every day. So, I, yeah. and it turns out it's very healthy. Yeah. Um, uh, it's all healthy ingredients. And um, one step that he, you mentioned that is really good for heart health is that you said that you drain the water from the canned beans. Yeah. And that, in for a lot of the beans and a lot of the products, you can... Um, get off any excess salt that they might have when they're canned. Yep, salt or preservatives, Preserve right? Any, yeah. Exactly. And the beans have a lot of protein and fiber, so it's 
very, uh, uh, not a very complex uh, combination, the sofrito with the black beans, and you're having a lot, a lot of healthy um, nutrients there. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And you know, I didn't, um, I added my cumin in there. I added my uh, liquid. I used water. You could use, again, vegetable stock as well to impart a little more flavor. And once these, all of these ingredients are together, I'll just add my black beans in there and we'll let those cook and you know what's going to happen is the natural thickening agent from the black beans so the, the, the starch from the bean will start to come out and that's what uses to like thicken the product yeah okay so so i mean again you could see we've got a bunch of things going pretty quickly i want to thank uh my chef andrew here who's been here all day helping me to get things prepared but so you could see the quinoa is kind of, it's like, it's rolling now. It's almost yeah. at like a, like a boil. I don't want it to go too far. So I'm now I'm going to turn it down and just let it kind of simmer nicely. See how it just came down. And really the steam and a little of that heat will allow that to keep cooking. Right? Mm -hmm. So we're now, we've turned that down. We have our black beans going here and let those go for about a good solid, like five to 10, you know, five to 10 minutes you'll start to thicken. All right, okay. so um, next we have some cabbage that we're gonna make a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of cabbage slaw. And I like, you know, cabbage, you, what do you know about cabbage? I, I love cabbage. I know that it has like a lot of like, for me it's, it's a textural component, Yeah. but I know that it has a lot of good um, qualities to it so well um, definitely has a vitamins and fiber which is very, all both they are both very important yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah no it's uh, again I we we find it a lot uh, in our cooking we see it a lot um, in in like kind of fermented processes mm -hmm. where people you know they, they take a cat like in a Korean cooking they'll make kimchi out of it they'll rub it with salt and chili paste and, and set it aside for a month and I know that it has a lot of gut gut health too. So this this ingredient I think is, is super functional and versatile for, for many different types of cooking. I I took my cabbage, I just kind of I julienned it on this uh, this mandolin. So if you don't have one of these at home, it's a great tool. It's a it's a fantastic cooking tool for, for vegetable prep. We kind of took our cabbage and just if you take it, it's so so simple and you gotta be careful with your fingers. But other than that, super easy to like cut. So we just prep that out. And then you could do a lot of things with this cabbage. A lot of times we'll make like a pickle out of it. So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll pickle it usually with vinegar, you know, sometimes salt and sugar, but we're not doing that for, for our purposes today, yeah. right? <laughs> we're using um, some citrus juices. Right, so I have a lot of uh, lime juice right here and some agave nectar as well. So a little, little sweetness mm -hmm. and then a little bit of olive oil as well. And what's going to happen is that lime juice is going to start cooking this. It's going to start wilting it down and you could get a little further ahead on this. You would get okay. it like a little, you know, it'll start to pickle it again. If you, if you added a pinch of salt, could, but we're not going to do that today. We're not, <laughs> not doing today. that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is, again, super, super simple. Texturally, it adds a lot of texture on a, like a grain bowl or, or, or a rice bowl. So yeah, we are, again, pretty easy, right? We have, uh, now I'm, I'm starting to build my elements. Right, okay. they're all kind of coming coming together. Um, we have our quinoa working, our black beans, our chicken. The chicken's going to take a little bit a little bit longer. While the chicken is working, while these things are like working, I wanted to bring in some other ingredients okay. that you know we could uh, chat about. That you know I find to be super healthy, rich in antioxidants and vitamins and minerals. So I really I love green asparagus one of my I love asparagus too yeah, yeah. yes 
How do you like to how do you like to have your asparagus typically when 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 you have it like what what is your preferred well, more method? More like baked and with some just not much uh, added to it. More kind of simple. Yeah. Uh, like oil, some o olive oil, or but not very basic. Not not too complex. Not too not with too much added flavor. Got yeah. it. Yeah, that I I, I agree, and I think. Um, I like it with olive oil, salt, oh, salt. a little yeah. bit of salt, yeah. olive oil, uh, some herbs, usually rosemary and thyme, uh, fresh squeeze of lemon. I like to roast it as mm -hmm. well. Okay. And so, you know, roasted, a little bit of olive oil, some herbs, um, maybe a touch of Parmesan, maybe just a little. <laughs> if you, if without, yes, yeah, yes. Right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. just let me know. If yeah. I'm going, if I'm going <laughs> over the, if I'm going over the yeah. edge, you just let me know, you know? Um, all right, so we have... Uh, Avocados over here, I think, um, what a great ingredient. Yes. Um, you know, I, one of my favorite ingredients, I use it for as a garnish. And I mean, it's a great garnish as a soup garnish, as a rice bowl garnish. Really, there's, there's so much versatility in it uh, as a dip, avocado toast. Um, you you, you want to add something? On, yes. Yeah, um, yeah. First of all, I... I want to, I, I just remember, and I grew up with having an avocado tree in my backyard. Oh, so I was fortunate we would just go out to the backyard and get the avocados. But the avocados have the healthy, you know, we have some healthy oils and some other oil, plant oils that are not as healthy. So the oil from avocado is very healthy and has the vitamins um, that are also all an, an antioxidants, which are also good for the heart. And so... It's a great, great uh, food uh, with a lot of nutrition and tasty. Yeah, and yeah. we happen to have some avocado oil right here too, which yeah. is uh, fantastic. You know, I, I like to use avocado oil as a finishing oil, not necessarily as a cooking oil, but something that I'll make a salad dressing with. You mm -hmm. know, uh, potentially like, you know, if we have this cabbage, I might add a little avocado oil to it as well. But yeah, just... If I'm looking for a healthier fat, this is this is where I'm going. And and i we should other mention what other what are the other healthy oils like uh, corn oil. Uh, uh, definitely my favorite is olive oil, but corn oil is healthy. Thought flour oil is healthy. The ones that we should stay away from are coconut oil and palm kernel oils. Those yeah. are not those are not good for in terms of heart healthy oils. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I'm making a note right now. <laughs> no coconut note. oil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's good because I think there's a lot of, um, I don't know, misinformation maybe out there. And so I think it's great that, you know, you're, you're bringing that, that expertise to, to the game here. So I also have sweet potatoes. So I know for me, I, what an, what ingredient that packs so much flavor and so easy to prepare. So I'll usually put a little bit of, uh, again, a little bit of olive oil, wrap it in foil, okay. put it in the oven, cook it for about 45 minutes to an hour mm. until it's nice and soft. And really, I mean, at that point, you can, you can do anything with it. It's a great, simple, like, side dish, side garnish. Um, you know, I, you can take it and mash it and make a puree out of it. It's one of my favorite ingredients. And, it, you know, it has a lot of vitamin C and... So it has, it's full of vitamins and also fiber. As I mentioned before, fiber is good because it can lower your cholesterol. So also another some healthy uh, addition to your diet. Yeah. Yeah. So we got the sweet potatoes. We have, uh, so a couple, like, you know, dessert options. I have, I have a sweet tooth. I have, like, Me a too. sweet craving. I love chocolate, too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we have, you know, again... Um, dark chocolate is known as you know rich in antioxidants, really uh, good for you, and kind of takes care of that like that sweet craving you might have, right? I mean that that's what it does for me. How, how about yourself? I, I definitely, um, if you the chocolate lovers, in terms of heart health, uh, just go for the dark chocolate because it has uh, some uh, components that are healthy for the heart and for the heart vessels. Um, like that, you have their blueberries and have antioxidants. And what those are, antioxidants are very good to help um, prevent inflammation and 
in the vessels because we know actually now we know that um, having blockages in the arteries is not all about cholesterol is also uh, with inflammation can cause problems with the arteries so if uh, anything that uh, is anti-inflammatory which we can find in a lot of our uh, what we call superfoods uh, anti-inflammatories are very important also for the heart okay yeah. got it a lot of anti anti-inflammatories yeah you know i've been I've been doing a lot of cold water plunges to get my uh -huh. inflammation down, you know, and so I think, yeah. but adding, you know, exercise and, you know, eating, you know, superfoods and heart healthy foods, it just has to be the way forward for all of us. It really has to, I mean, I think being conscious, being aware and getting information on what are the foods that are good for you, how to prepare them, I think it's, it's really, you know, um, yeah, the, the way to go going forward. So I'm checking on my... My chicken over here looking pretty That's good. good. This is like the hot side, so I'm going to move this over to the kind of cool side, let them keep roasting over here. Uh, if we look at our quinoa, it's looking pretty good. You can see kind of all that liquid has been yeah. absorbed. Uh, we've got the right ratio. I'm going to let it keep steaming. Really what you want is you want those, those kernels to kind of fully bloom, right? Well, it's looking pretty good. Uh, the beans have a nice consistency yeah. and richness to them. See, I like a bean. I don't like my beans to be too dry. I like it brothy. Sometimes I use that as like part of the sauce. Oh, right? me too. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, yeah. you know, if I, get yeah. A, if I get a dry bean, I'm a, I might yeah. be a little upset. Like, hey, <laughs> come on. You know, like, give me, give me some of that bean liquid. Yeah. So, all right. So we're looking pretty good. Uh, the chicken is still roasting nicely. I'm going to cut a few garnishes. Again, okay. if we think about like flavorful, healthy garnishes. So I have here my absolute favorite herb of all time. Like I, I don't think, uh, I think if my, my grandma said, if she heard me say I like parsley better, she'd be like, Jose, I'm going to. So, <laughs> so no, cilantro. It's, cilantro. Yeah, it's really, you know, again, has so much flavor. So like healthy for you. There's a, there's a lot of like packed with a ton of good, um, just restorative properties. A lot of folks don't know that the stems are actually one of the best things for oh, you. I didn't know that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. There's a lot of flavor here. Okay. So if I'm making uh, a marinade or I'm, I'm putting, uh -huh. um, I, I need some more flavor in my soup, don't waste it. Use like cut the stems down and maybe tie mm -hmm. it up and just like throw it into your soup or stew but it has a lot of flavor and then here's just a little technique when I'm cutting my cilantro what I'll do is to get a nice cut is I'll take the top and I'll kind of just roll it this way and if the camera can get in here but I'm gonna just do this little what I call chiffonade so I'm creating a nice little bundle here right so it's nice and tight and then I'll take my knife and I'll take the tip of it the top of it and I'll just kind of come down. And what I have is a nice, okay. what we call is a chiffonade or like a French term for a very thin, clean piece of herb. And you know, you really don't want to, I don't like to over chop or kind of, you know, keep, you know, working the, the mm -hmm. herb. You lose a lot of flavor. Okay. And a lot of the liquid kind of leaches out of it. So this to me is done. I wouldn't chop it anymore. I wouldn't keep going. This is okay. like, it's perfect. A little whole leaf in there is okay. So I'm going to move that off to the side. I have my, our avocado. And so I'm going to show you guys how to cut, how to, how to cut an avocado, how to open it up. So you take uh, your knife. There's a pit in the middle. You take your knife down to the bottom and then just kind of roll it around. Right, and then you give it a counterclockwise turn. Take your knife, go there, and again, counterclockwise, the pit comes right out. And that comes out of there. Then I'll take a spoon, kind of a larger size spoon here. And what I'll do is I'll just take my spoon, and that pops right out. Oh, that's right? Great. One more. I'll just let you guys look at it one more time. Boom. Spoon. 
in there, pop it out. And you know what it's time for, doctor? It's time for a sip of sangria. Absolutely. What do you think? Um, How about we do this? I, Come on. Let's, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> Salud. Salud. Mm. See, the sangria it's makes me want to, yeah, makes me want to continue mm. to cook and cut that avocado. I'm, I'm mm. re-energized already. Mm -hmm. All right. So for our avocado, we're just going to do some nice thin slices, just like so. Just take your knife straight down. And this is, you know, again, we're creating more elements, more texture for your food. I have here uh, just a fresh lime. That's also going to add a lot of flavor. Yes. It's, you know, the acidity is going to wake everything up. It's going to mm -hmm. wake the beans up. It's going to make the chicken taste better. It's going to uh, wake the quinoa up. So, and I have this cool little technique for my limes. I call them lime cheeks. So I'll take my knife and create a cheek like that. And it's easy to squeeze. Okay. Right? So, <laughs> We'll do that. I'll do two of these, one for you, one for me. And then, you know, we don't ever want to waste anything. No. So I'll cut the other end, create four nice cheeks here with fresh lime juice. And then maybe I'll do this. I'll take this core and I'll just throw it into my beans. Just give it a little, a little yeah, sip. That's nice. Yeah. All right. So, man, we are looking so good. I'm, uh, I hope you're hungry because uh, I'm getting there. Yes, and the smell, you guys can smell it, but I, I'm here smelling everything. <laughs> so I'm going to take my chicken and what's important, one little like, important uh, step here is you, you always want to let your chicken rest. Anytime you're cooking a protein, okay. what happens is in the cooking process, you can see here we have hot heat that's going from the outside and from the inside. And what it's doing is it's pushing all those juices to the center. And so by letting it rest, it lets those juices redistribute throughout the, throughout the product. Okay. So then you're, you're stuck with a, a more juicy product as mm -hmm. opposed to one that's dry. If I was to cut this right now, all the juices would spill out and we'd be having mm -hmm. like a... So that's just a little, a little tip for everyone. But again, just to go through what we have going on. Our cabbage, our cilantro, our limes, our avocados, our black beans, all this, you know, elements to hopefully make a delicious plate of food that's heart healthy and good for you. Our quinoa looks perfect. I'm really happy with that. All right, and you know, we had talked earlier before the set. I mean, um, you had freely admitted to me, hey, I'm not, I'm not a fantastic cook, but <laughs> Is this something, is this a meal you think for someone who's, who's a novice or just beginning to learn how to cook that they could, they could do? Uh, definitely, absolutely. Uh, okay. Yes, it's uh, very, even someone like me who is not, I don't cook very often, I can learn how to do it and, and it's delicious and healthy. Perfect, yeah. perfect, yeah, that was, that was the goal. I do have a little bit of cotija cheese here, which is a, it's a cow's milk cheese, it's a drier cheese, mm -hmm. has a lot of flavor. I might just add a little of this, or is that okay? We oh, absolutely, a little bit, a little, a little bit. bit, everything in moderation. All right, a little You're bit, a little a bit. a little bit of everything. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, <laughs> yeah. so let's build this dish up. So I'm gonna start by putting just like a little scoop of quinoa right on the bottom, right on that plate. And then I'm gonna take some of those black beans. Now I'm gonna come over here. And we'll get some of those black beans right on there. Again, the black bean sauce, right? The juice okay. is the sauce. And now we're going to, we're gonna slice our chicken. And I do some nice thin slices. Perfectly cooked, no problem. Chicken is cooked. I, you know, I cook it through the, cook it through the medium. You know, about you usually want to have an internal temperature of about at least 165 degrees. But you could see, doctor, you could see all the. I mean, it has a ton of flavor out here. All mm -hmm. those the the spices have kind of caramelized. They've attached to the chicken, so it's going to taste mm -hmm. fantastic. 
So we've got this beautiful yeah, piece of chicken good. here. A little bit of our cabbage, let's not forget this, mm -hmm. or a little texture. And you could see it's wilted from the lime juice. You know, the, the lime juice has started to cook oh, okay. it. It's extracted the liquid from the cabbage, and it's going to give a nice pop, a nice crunch to what we have going on here. So a little bit of cabbage mm -hmm. right there. Just a little, you know, not, nothing too, too crazy. And this you can, you can store in your, in your fridge for up to two or three days. It, it'll hold nicely. You, get, you can see it gives us some nice color as well. Then again, because we eat with our eyes. So mm -hmm. a few nice slices of this beautiful this green beautiful avocado. Green, the colors, yes. Right there, a little bit of cilantro, just to give me a little more flavor right on top. Possibly a, just a touch of this cotija cheese on the black beans. And a little lime, right? Mm -hmm. So I would love for you to try this dish and let me know what you think. Okay. Yeah. And I've, I've eaten this dish like a million times, so I, I know it's good. I think it's going to be good, but yeah. Uh -huh. We we'll start with the beans here. Beans with the quinoa. I saw beans. kind of the, so mix in here. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Rico. Rico. Que rico. Que mm. bien. Wow. Yeah. I need a. A knife. A knife? Okay, yeah. sure. Here, why, don't, why don't you let yeah. me put this up? Yeah, the chicken is, yeah. is, is real. Yeah, yeah. Let me just give that a little. So, Jose, you know, you have just demonstrated that you can have hard, healthy food that is fun to make and has a lot of flavor because people think of hard, healthy food like it's bland, no flavor, not fun. Yeah. And you just demonstrated that it, it's can be fun and with a lot of flavor yeah yeah I mean I think that's that's it and I would you know definitely um, recommend you cook with your partner cook with your spouse it makes it makes it even more fun uh, if you mm -hmm. you know if you're single you cook alone okay have have fun turn the music on have a glass of wine but yeah cooking is fun and you know even though I, I've been in the restaurant business a long time I always recommend that folks cook at home and learn how to cook a good meal because uh, because you never know. You should be learning. You should be cooking at home, cooking your own food. So it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited that you, that you liked our dish. Yes. And you said something really important about cooking at home because actually uh, a lot of the studies have shown that um, patients actually, or people when they uh, buy uh, packaged foods or processed food or eat fast foods, they definitely have a higher content of salt, saturated fats, what is not, not healthy and cooking at home, you have more control of what you add and, and of the ingredients and it definitely has been shown to be significantly healthier. Uh, yeah. One, 100%, I For, mean, all of our ingredients were fresh. I did use a little bit of sofrito, which I would say, you know, is, is that was that was a product yes. I brought in. But you don't need to do that. You could just add a red pepper to the onions and garlic that I had, and you'll you'll get there. Just cook it a little bit longer. But yeah, these this is all 100% natural, fresh ingredients from Giant, and <laughs> and uh, yes. yeah. So I think um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really glad that you know we got to cook together tonight and. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure to be here with you. Um, I want to thank everyone uh, for, for joining us this evening. Do you have any other parting thoughts you'd like to say? Well, I uh, just want to thank you for inviting me, and this has been a lot of fun. And uh, I hope uh, that you take this message uh, to your family and friends. And um, I, having a heart-healthy food has been shown to really decrease the risk of developing heart disease and prevent deaths uh, from heart disease. So um, it's been great and a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, um, to get the recipe and the event recap, you can go to aldeanews.com. And certainly want to thank our, our sponsors, the American Heart Association, 
and Giant Foods for uh, making this possible for us today. Yes. Thank you.